Hello, Dr. Danger Masset here, and I've got a project on this LG Grand Pro here. Brand new. This is a 17Z 90SP with an Intel Core Ultra 7 processor, and it's got 32 gigabytes of RAM. So it's got a nice spec on it. The only thing that's not so good, it's only got one terabyte of SSD. I want to check, it's got a read-write speed of about 3,200 megabits per second. It's just run of the mill. Actually, this is a really nice machine. Look at that. It weighs virtually nothing. The new SSD, which I've chosen, is this Predator. It's four terabytes and it's got read-write speeds of up to 7,500, so it's a beast. And it's Gen 4. Now, the latest is actually Gen 5, but those prices are really silly. This one costs about £200, so it's actually quite a bargain. Before I fit this to this machine, I'm going to give you a few pointers about exactly what you need to check before you buy a new SSD. You find all these things out that I'm about to tell you by going online, typing in the model of your laptop and asking about the SSD specification. First thing you need to look for is what's called the form factors, which basically it's the type of port that's in your laptop. So there's two basic types. There's a 2.5 inch or there's an M.2. Now this one is an M.2, so that's correct. The second thing we need to look at is the interface. Now there are two main interfaces for SSD. There's NVMe, which is non-volatile memory express, and SATA, which is serial ATA. This one is NVM. It's missing an E, they've spelt it wrong, but <laughs> you know what I mean. Uh, or it could be SATA, but you need to find that out by finding the specification from your laptop beforehand. The final thing is the physical space that you've got. Now in here, especially ones like this, which are so little, the space restrictions are real. So you need to find out what's the maximum size of SSD that your machine will take. It's generally length that's a determining factor. So there we have it. Check all those things first. Once all those are in place, then you can just play around with, oh, I want a four terabyte, and I want a, re a read-write speed of 7,000 or whatever. Righty ho, so first thing we need to do is take off the back. And what I noticed was, unlike other laptops, there don't seem to be any screws whatsoever. So we'll always start off with the feet because they tend to hide them under here for aesthetic purposes. I've got plastic prizes. Oh, there we go, there's some screw here. So let's undo these little screws here. As you can see, they are Phillips head. So to get into the back, I gently took the screwdriver and prized it under here to get the first bits of back away. And then I'm going to move along. Okay. Before we go and do anything with the inside, we need to make sure that we are earthed so that we don't have any static charge which disrupts any of the electronics in there. The best way to do it is to actually have an earthing strap that you wear and is constantly attached to an earthing point. But I haven't got one, and if you haven't too, don't go rushing out and buying one because you can do it one of several ways. Radiators. Don't touch the painted bit. It's far more effective on the exposed metal bit here, and that will discharge your static. This new SSD is totally blank. So if I was to install it into the laptop here, there would be nothing. So what I need to do is make sure that I have things like the operating system of this machine, which is probably Windows 11, which I hate, and all files and folders, which are currently on there. There are two ways to clone. The first one is, before you put this in the machine, you can buy an enclosure, which holds the SSD and allows you to copy onto it. It basically turns it into like an external disk drive for the purposes of you copying your data onto it before you install it. The second way to do it 
is what I'm doing here and you need two M.2 ports to be able to do it. So I've got one M.2 port here, which is the current SSD. And over here, there is a blank M.2 port, which I can install another SSD card in if I wish, which is what I want to do. That will enable me to copy from one to the other in the machine without buying a special enclosure. Another thing is that this is mapped as the main drive for the laptop. So if I don't want to remap the new one, is move this one to there during the cloning process. So this will be like the secondary drive, like a D drive, for example, while this is a C drive. I'm gonna put the new SSD in there. Then once it's been cloned from one to the other, I'm then going to remove that and put it into a different machine. And then the new SSD should show up as the main drive without me having to go in and start changing directories. It goes around that way, because if you look, there are two different sizes of thing which go in the port. And slot it in gently, like so. There we go. And you know it's in nicely because this LG Gram is engineered pretty well. Location on the SSD to the screw hole is absolutely spot on. So put that on. Now this one can go in tightly because this one is staying in and this one is coming out once the data on it's been cloned. Right, I've got to get this up and running a little bit so I can do the cloning. I'm not going to fasten the back on totally. Turn it up like that. Oh, look at that. Oh, nice brand new. What does seven mean? Mysteries of the universe. Maybe if I read more instructions, I'd know that. <laughs> These are my favorite things when you get new things. They're awesome. It's a new machine. So before we can move on to the next step, I have to go through a hundred million years or more maybe of updating and so on. But I will see you shortly. When you boot up and look at File Explorer, you can't see the newly installed drive. So what you need to do is go into Disk Management. Disk Management. Like that. And if you look down here, you'll see your original SSD here and the one you've just installed here. Now I've already initialized this, but you won't have, so you need to initialize it. You click on it, right click, and then you'll have the option to initialize disk. You'll have two options, either an MBR, which is a master boot record, or you'll have the option of a GPT, which is a GUI partition table. Now I would select the latter. It's a more modern system and it's far more flexible in terms of the partitions that you can do on there. And then you okay that, and that means your disk is initialized. Is we need to do the cloning from one SSD to another. And we don't want to spend any money where we can help it. So we go to Macrium Reflect Free. There we go. Click on the 30 day trial, move down. I'm a home user. I'm going to download the free trial, 64 bit. You need to register for an account, which is a penalty we pay, obviously, for free software. And when you've registered, you'll have to activate your account and you'll be able to start using the software. We've registered downloaded and installed the software. So now we're ready to start cloning. Open Macrium. First of all, we want to select the disk we want to clone from. And that's this one, which is one terabyte. Select clone this disk. And then bear in mind, you're unlikely to want to copy everything from the original disk to the new one. There are only two items which will be cloned to the new SSD. And that is the NTFS uh, main partition. And the second is the EFI partition, which is basically a boot partition and allows the PC to turn on. Select a disk to clone to. Then an obligatory dialog box will appear, which is solely designed to give you a heart attack and make you feel like you're going to lose all your data. So click yes. From the options, select erase disk and then Press next underneath, go on to the next step. We want to run the clone now rather than schedule it, so it's just next. 
This is just a summary of what you want to do. So press finish and then press OK, because why do something in one step when you can do it in 20? So now we've cleaned the disc, we can remove the power and take out the old SSD. Don't forget to earth yourself. I'm doing that now, touching the plug. And the one we want to remove is this one. Just to give it a wobble. There we go. Put this back in in case I want to install something at a later date. Next thing I want to do is before I assemble it, I want to check it's booting up okay on the new SSD. So we have the moment of truth. What should happen is now the data has been cloned, it should default automatically to the SSD that's left. <laughs> Yay, and it works. So I'm gonna try something. I'm going to look into Windows Explorer. I'm going to look at the C drive and the properties. Mm -hmm. One terabyte. So it's showing one terabyte and it should be four terabytes. And now this is down to a partition issue and that is a whole different subject in itself. So what I'll do is I'll put a link below, then you can fix it that way. That's it. The new SSD is installed. The old S SSD is out and I need to put the screws back in the bottom to secure it closed. But that is job done. You may want to go and look into disk management at the allocations for partitions and see that they're accurate and have a play with those. So yeah, that's essentially how you swap the SSD out. Oh, I hope you found this video useful. If you did, you can do subscribey things and likey things and even buy me a coffee using the thanks button. And uh, I'd like to hear your comments about how you got on. That'd be great. And I hopefully see you soon.